Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Jessie's Journey, or if you're new here, hi, welcome. So glad you're here. Today is the most exciting video I think I've ever like filmed on this channel, and so if you're new here, really glad this is the first one you're watching because I have a huge announcement that I've been holding in for many a month now and I am terrible at keeping secrets um, and yeah, I'm just so excited to finally be able to share it. Woo! Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know or if you're just tuning in, here's a little recap of the last year of my life. Um, but basically, I'm an American expat who lives in Prague. I moved here in January of 2017 to teach English. I work at a preschool. The kids are amazing. I love this city. It's my first time living abroad and this year has been absolutely amazing. I also have documented this entire journey on my travel in my series called The Prague Diaries where I post month in review videos of just what I've been doing. So make sure you check that out if you haven't seen that before. Um, but yeah, I have an exciting announcement. If you can't tell from the title, I'm not gonna be in Prague much longer because I am moving. Now, I actually have two very exciting moves coming up. I have one short-term move where I'll be going to another country for just a couple months to do some humanitarian work, um, and then I'll be home for the summer, seeing my family, because I haven't seen them in a bloody year, um, and then I'm going to be doing another full-time move to a whole different continent and culture, and I'm very excited about that, and I'm gonna be filling you in on both of those moves in this video, but before I do, you know, just to build the suspense like every good YouTuber does, I'm gonna tell you some reasons why I will be leaving Prague. Now, also, I know some of you probably just don't care and you want to see where I'm moving to, so I will put the number timestamp on the screen somewhere so you can just jump ahead to that if you just want to figure out where the heck I'm moving to. Um, but if not, here are some reasons as to why I'm leaving Prague. Reason numero uno. Um, the plan has always kind of been that I was going to live in Europe for a year and then live in Asia for a year. Um, I cannot confirm or deny the statement on Asia. Just wait till the video. I need, I have some explaining to do. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, I kind of had to figure out, you know, did I want to do another year? Did I want to do, do I want to do another? I'm an English teacher, English is hard. Um, but I had to figure out if I wanted to do another year here in Prague or not. Um, and I realized one of my goals in life is to live on every continent for an extended period of time. And in order to do that, I have to get to the other continents. Um, so that was kind of encouragement for me to make this next big move. Reason number two, getting a visa in the Czech Republic is just hecka hard. I absolutely hated it when I moved here the first time and I really don't want to do it again. It's expensive, it's complicated. I don't, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I want to go somewhere else um, that hopefully has a slightly easier uh, process of getting a visa. Um, but yeah, so that was a huge reason as to why I chose um, to leave just because my visa will be expiring at the end of January and I don't want to go through the process of getting another one. Reason number three. This one's kind of serious, but it's something that has kind of been weighing on my heart for this past um, school year since September, and that is just the general like education structure in the Czech Republic. Um, there's kind of it's a it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. I would say they're just pretty lax here, um, but it kind of does not create a good conducive environment to kids wanting to actually learn. English. So for example, here I cannot give grades, I cannot give homework, I can give tests, but the tests don't matter because I can't give grades. Um, I know I work for like, I work basically with grades 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, so some of them are just learning English, some of them have learned it and are basically fluent, which is really impressive, um, but it's just hard as a teacher to go into a school and feel like your kids aren't really motivated to learn, and I know in part um, being a teacher is being able then to motivate your kids to want to learn what you're teaching them, um, but there's also deeper rooted issues um, just with like the education system here and I just it's really been rubbing me the wrong way this year I've had some major struggles um, with some of my classes mainly my like second and third grade class uh, I just I have yeah I've really struggled there have been like classes where I've had to scream and yell just to get the kids to quiet down and listen and want to learn um, which like 
I'm not that type of person. Like, I don't like losing my cool. I don't like yelling. I don't like being a disciplinary person. Um, so that hasn't been enjoyable. Um, and it's also frustrating to see because those grades, literally I've had, we've done tests on this too, where like their Czech teachers will walk in and the kids will automatically sit down and be good and quiet because they do have incentives, um, such as like a grading system for their Czech classes. So they respect their Czech teachers, but then like as soon as they leave, it's just like me who can't really like give them any disciplinary action. I can't punish them. I can't give them poor grades. I can't give them extra homework because they're being bad. And so then they're just like wild and crazy. And it's just been kind of a taxing environment to be in and just not really enjoyable. I want to work somewhere where kids also want to learn and can see the value in what I'm teaching them. And maybe they don't see big picture value, but they can at least be like appreciative of the fact that I'm giving them my time. Number four, I've had some really bad interactions with some Czech co-teachers recently and I honestly just don't feel comfortable in the school I'm in too because of this. Um, now I do have a couple co-Czech teachers that I work with, basically like a co-teacher, um, and I think this will be anywhere you go to teach English, um, basically you are given somebody who speaks the native language to kind of help you out along the way, help you with the children, help you get your curriculum down, um, all that type of thing. Um, and I have some really amazing co-teachers. Um, and then I also have some really rude ones. And for a while I was like, oh, maybe it's just like cultural, um, maybe like, cause I know like they're kind of like um, stern and like um, withdrawn, not in like a cold way, but it's just very cultural. Where like in America, you're just kind of like over the top friendly, um, even if it comes off as fake sometimes. And they're just not like that here. Um, and so for a while I was like, maybe it's just the cultural experience and that's just kind of how they are. But I've kind of realized more through talking with other English teachers that it's really just, this isn't the case. Um, and I just, I am kind of sick of the toxic atmosphere. Um, and there have been like, I don't speak a ton of Czech, but there have definitely been moments where like, I know enough words that I can tell the Czech teachers are discussing me or another English teacher. And I just don't feel comfortable in that situation. Um, and so I looked at my options and I figured, you know, if I'm not happy, as happy, I, I am happy, but if I'm not as happy as I could be in this situation, why not go find another situation and see if I can make it better? Reason number five. Honestly, the most important reason, and I've talked about this on my channel a couple times, but is my faith, and I feel like God is telling me it's time to go to the next country that I'm gonna be going to, which is gonna segue into my first announcement as to where I am moving. Um, but basically, the country I will be moving to for a short period of time to do humanitarian work, I have felt called there for the last maybe like two years. I've always wanted to go there, I've always wanted to work there, but I never knew how or why or when and timing just never seemed right like it never seemed like it was like yes I'm sending you here now for this specific time for this specific person for uh, whatever it may be um, and so I feel like really now it's clicking and it is time for that um, which is exciting and terrifying and I am so hopeful for it but also so nervous um but yeah so that's honestly my biggest reason as to why i'm going to be moving a lot of the other stuff is just small little petty kind of things honestly but this is a big thing and it's the reason i'm moving so should we just get into the announcement should i tell you where the heck i'm moving to because i've been wanting to say it for so long let's do it Maybe. okay Okay, so my visa expires at the end of January, which means technically my tourist visa, I could be here for another 90, 90 days if I wanted on a tourist visa, um, but I just, I wouldn't be able to work, I wouldn't be able to get paid, and I just kind of be bumming around, don't want to do that. So on February 1st, I will be moving to my next country, which is, drum roll please, Macedonia! I am so excited for this. I've just always felt drawn to Macedonia and I really don't know why. I don't know too much about culture. I don't know too much about like just general environment, um, but I always wanted to move there. And the reason I'm moving is to work at a refugee camp. I'll be working there for three months because that's as long as the um, uh, volunteer visa is valid for and then I could stay for another three months on a tourist visa if I wanted as well um, but I'm just gonna initially start with the uh, volunteer visa and see how it goes from there um, but yeah I'm gonna be working at a refugee camp um, I have a bunch of different jobs that I'm going to be doing 
I'm going to mainly be teaching English um, with the children there, playing with them in English, encouraging them to develop this language because regardless of where they end up being placed after they are out of the refugee camp, um, it will be a handy language to learn um, because most places, if they're placed in Europe, will have it as a second primary language that people can speak. Um, so it's a key important skill to have. So I'll be working with the kids with that, also with their parents, but mainly um, focusing with kids, just playing with them, dancing, singing, doing joy-filled things to uplift their spirits and encourage their time at the camp. I'll also be doing some practical things like food distribution, general item distribution, um, refugee paperwork, um, just like the logistics of what's going on at the camp, helping with those like type of paperwork things, um, but then also helping with paperwork for them when they're finding permanent residency um, in their like process of applying for asylum and their process for applying for like visas to be able to stay in a country and work and get like citizenship there, like all that I'm going to be intermixed with. So it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of hard work, but I'm so excited for it. Now with this, there are some logistical things that I just want to talk about, document here, um, put out into the universe. Um, I will still be teaching with VIP Kid. I've done a video about that already, what that's like, what it is. Um, so I'll be able to do a couple hours a week teaching with VIP Kid online. Um, but I'm also going to have to fundraise the majority of my money for this trip, for those three months that I'm going to be serving at this refugee camp. Um, now, this has been a process so far. I've started doing the beginning stages of fundraising and I really hate it like asking people for money is so awful and so like humili like it's so humbling and so embarrassing at the same time to be like I don't have it together and I need to raise $2,000 for this trip will you be willing to help me um, and I've had some amazing responses because I think regardless of people's um, like faith because for me I'm doing it with a Christian perspective, but it's not a Christian camp that I'm working at. Um, but regardless of that, people can understand that there's a crisis going on. Um, so even though for me, I'm like, yes, I'm going to shine a light and reflect Jesus's love for these people, even though they've gone through horrific things, um, I think people will st are still willing to like see my heart in the matter and see the heart in those people and want to help them. Um, so I've had some great experiences. I've also had some like harsh experiences. Um, I think I've talked about this in a video before, but a lot of the people in the Czech Republic are very anti-refugee. Um, and it is a very interesting political dynamic. Um, I've learned a lot and I've had to push myself a lot um, to figure out my beliefs on the matter. But yeah, it's been, sometimes it's been discouraging to just have people not like question but like almost attack me for my decision that I'm making. Um, but at the same time, I'm fully confident, like I said before, that this is the time that God is calling me there for a specific reason, a specific purpose. And because of that, I know he will provide all the funds that I need. That being said, <laughs> that being said, I guess I'll put a link. Do I want to include this in the video? Maybe I will, just because, okay. That being said, I'm going to put a link in the description box to my GoFundMe that I am raising my money on. Even just like $2 helps so much. Um, so I'd appreciate if you'd be willing to check that out, read a little bit more about my story there because I explained why I'm going there and what life's been like here in Prague. Um, and yeah, consider donating. That would be absolutely amazing. Okay, so let's talk about big move number two. So like I said, after Macedonia, I'm gonna be going home for the summer. Um, I have a couple friends who are getting married. I wanna spend time with my family because I haven't seen them in so long and I just miss them. Um, so I wanna catch up with them, just have quality time with them. And then I'm going to be moving again. Now, I actually have two kind of polar opposite um, options um, as to what I'm going to be doing. So I will put them out here now into the world and I guess we'll find out what I choose in a couple months. Um, but right now I have prospects on two different continents. Um, like I said before, Asia is somewhere I wanna try. Um, it's very outside of my comfort zone. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I feel like when I first came to Prague, I came because it was like a new experience, but still like slightly what I'm used to, whereas Asia is like completely out there. Um, but I originally had contacts started in South Korea and I was going to move there. Um, however, with everything going on in the world, I honestly, I don't feel too scared about the idea of moving there, but I know my mom 
would probably kill me before there was a potential for us to go to nuclear war. Um, so I don't think I will be moving there just to appease my mother. I understand too, something I've learned a lot this year is that my actions have consequences that sometimes I don't see and I need to be respectful of those consequences. And if one of the consequences of me choosing to move to a completely different country where there's a really intense like climate right now with what's going on in North Korea and the rest of the world, um, and that's gonna affect my mom. I should probably be gracious and loving and understanding and not do that for her sake. And I know basically any person that I've talked to or told I was considering it were like, don't do that. Um, so honestly, I don't know. If you have an opinion, I would love to hear people's opinions down in the comment section about this. Um, but yeah, basically I'm still pursuing those options, but if I do move to Asia, I will likely be moving to Vietnam. Um, I've had a couple contacts started there. I've sent out a couple applications. I talked with one international school, so I'm kind of like laying the foundation there because I wouldn't be doing that until like August anyways. Um, so I'm not like heavily pursuing it, but I did want to have some contacts started. Um, but then my other option is to move to South America and work in Peru. Um, I found an international school there that I'm just like, really obsessed with and I love like based off of everything I've read online um, their website like other people's stories about working there like I really want to work with them um, and I think it'd be really awesome to live in Peru um, I think either continent that I go to is going to have some amazing cultural experiences I'm gonna be pushed I'm gonna be challenged um, like I said, I feel like Asia would kind of push me outside of my comfort zone a little more, not to say that like Peru wouldn't, um, because it would, um, but I feel like Asia is just kind of this thing that like I want to do and tackle and push myself to do. I know this is kind of like a silly thing, but one of my biggest fears of moving to Asia is the food because I have so many food allergies that they use in Asian cuisine. Um, I'm like worried about not being able to eat, which is so stupid. Um, but I think that's honestly what I'm like the most nervous about. Um, and so I also want to like make sure I think about the practicality of my decisions because I also just don't want to go an entire year like being really terrified that I might eat something that touched something that I'm allergic to and that'll die because <laughs> like, that's honestly the reality of my allergies um, but yeah so I don't know those are my two options Asia or South America like I said to be determined um, but yeah I'm looking to do that around August time I'm super excited to take you guys along with that journey um, but for now first big move getting over to Macedonia, working at a refugee camp. I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe I've been in Prague for like a year now. That's insane. Um, and that this time has come. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting, exciting time. This whole year has been an exciting time. And this next step is just gonna be absolutely amazing. And I can't wait for it. <laughs> Alrighty guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, share it with family, share it with strangers. Y'all know the drill. Um, I'm super excited for what the future has in store. I hope you are too, so make sure you subscribe so you get all my updates as I'm moving around the world and doing crazy, exciting things. Um, but yeah, what a great time to be alive. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Bye guys.